Some of the reaction to right-wing populist candidate Javier Millet shocking many in his bid. He won to become the next president of Argentina. Days later, another far-right populist, Geert Wilders, also pulled off a big victory in the Netherlands. Though there's still a lot of work for him to try to put together a coalition government now, and many are wondering if any of these wins point to clues about how American voters feel in 2024. We are back now with our panel. I want to read something from the Wall Street Journal editorial board characterizing this, saying the big winner, Geert Wilders, a veteran right-wing campaigner, the, vi the freakout that his victory has triggered across Europe is something to behold. Kevin... They're scared of this guy, and they're worried about the implications of some of these other wins. They are, and it's glorious. Geert Wilders is the Nigel Farage of the Netherlands, and that's a compliment, which is to say that if you spend time talking to people around the world, Shannon, especially in Europe and Latin America, as we saw with Malay and Argentina, they are frustrated by what Americans are frustrated here, which is that the elites not only take our self-governance and ruin our human flourishing, but they are really arrogant about it when we complain. And so it is glorious because it shows that we're about to turn the corner after decades of European centralized control in Brussels, too much centralized power in Washington. For us on the political right in the United States, we believe the 2020s is going to be a golden era, not just here, but around the world. Okay, well, they do not share your view at the EU. They're I've very worried. That. They are very worried about um, what could be the impact of some of these wins, obviously, on what they're trying to hold together. Um, Politico notes this migration was a dominant issue in the Dutch election for EU politicians. It remains a pressing concern. As migrant numbers continue to rise, so too has support for far right parties in many countries in Europe. And of course, that's certainly an issue that we see playing out here as well. Uh, the illegal immigration problem is something that resonates with voters generally. And the elites have decided that they know better than voters generally. Now, one of the things that uh, the EU is concerned about is, will there be an exit? Will there be a vote to have the Netherlands leave the EU? Why is that concerning to them? Because the policies that are imposed by the elites are not popular. They're strong medicine for your own good. The thing about being an adult is that you get to make your own decisions, and a lot of countries are coming to that conclusion. I think that's true here in the United States as well. Well, as we look at the migration issue here, obviously there's a bipartisan agreement that the border is not in a good place. It is chaotic. We're hitting record numbers every month now. We've got some polling on this. The, the president's job performance on both national security and immigration, and as those things are linked, you can see he is way upside down on both of those, and, and disapproval far outweighing those who approve. And when we talk about the situation at the U.S. border, our latest polling shows that 85% of Americans think it's an emergency or a major problem. Marie, that's a difficult, another difficult topic for this White House to campaign on. It is. I think you've seen them surge resources to the border. They're taking this quite seriously. But when we talk about these, quote, far-right candidates, I think we need to be clear. These are not just ideological policy differences. These are all candidates, including Donald Trump, by the way, they model themselves off of him, who are calling free and fair elections rigged. They are taking away women's health care. They are calling immigrants scum in this debate about how to secure our borders. Call me old-fashioned, but I think that you can bring down inflation, secure our borders, go after elites if you're unhappy with them without being racist and misogynist and doing all these extreme things. Well, then do so, it. So I think President Biden is, actually. Well, but inflation but these polls, is, inflation these is polls down two-thirds from its... So I think we just need to be... But the polls show people don't think he's doing it. So, I, Shannon, I think we just need to be very clear when we talk about these right-wing parties and we talk about elites and we talk about how to bring down inflation and how to secure our border, that this shift to the right globally, which we're talking about today, is extreme. And it has taken us back to a place where people have fewer rights rights, people, particularly minorities and women, and, that, and then I think in this upcoming election, that's the case the Biden team will make, that you may, you may want inflation to come down faster, you may want the economy to grow more quickly, but doing that on the backs of Donald Trump and his extremism isn't the way to go. But no, that's the global trend here. No issue more difficult for this White House than the issue of immigration. And it is one in which we see the, the, with the White House shifting policy somewhat, more willing to embrace uh, border security measures to include that uh, in the in no, we're talking about proposal. building the wall. Um, and a, a, cha a change also in the Democratic in the Democratic Party, Democratic voters, you see uh, Democratic governors, Democratic mayors of big cities mm -hmm. saying this is a problem we need to address in a new and different way. So I think there is no, you know, there is no issue that more animates Donald Trump voters than the issue of immigration. And we're seeing this in, in the Netherlands, in France, in Germany, elsewhere as well.